In this example, we will graph the function y equals 2 cosecant of 3x plus pi. And before we do that, we will review the graphs of the basic sine and cosecant functions. So here we have the sine function in blue and the cosecant function in red. Because these two functions are reciprocals of each other, there is a relation between their graphs. At the x-intercepts of the sine function, the cosecant function has vertical asymptotes. So again, at the points where the sine function crosses the x-axis, the cosecant function has vertical asymptotes. Also, the maximum points of the sine function correspond to the minimum points of this top portion of the cosecant function. And the minimum points of the sine function correspond to the maximum points of this bottom portion of the cosecant function. So then, an easy technique for graphing this cosecant function is to first graph the sine function y equals to sine of 3x plus pi. So then, we will start by graphing y equals to sine of 3x plus pi. This function has the form y equals a sine of bx minus c. Then in our function a is 2, b is 3, and c is negative pi. So again, a is 2, b is 3, and c is negative pi. And this is because if we write 3x plus pi as 3x minus negative pi, then c is going to be negative pi. Now, to graph this function, first we need to find the amplitude, the period, and the phase shift. The amplitude is found by taking the absolute value of a, and the absolute value of 2 is 2. This tells us that the maximum value of the function will be 2, and the minimum value will be negative 2. The period is found using the formula 2 pi divided by b, then if we replace b with 3, then the period is 2 pi over 3. This means that the function will complete one cycle over this period. The phase shift is c over b, which is negative pi over 3. This represents the x-coordinate where the cycle will begin. I will start the rectangular coordinate system, and here we have the point where the cycle will begin. Now, to graph the sine function over one period, we will need five points, the maximum, the minimum, and the x-intercepts. For this, we need to divide the period by 4 to find a quarter period. So then, 2 pi over 3 divided by 4 equals... 2 pi over 3 times 1 over 4. Then if we divide 2 and 4 by 2, then we will get that a quarter period is pi over 6. Now we need to find the x-coordinates of the 5 points and the first x-coordinate will be negative pi over 3. So then we will write that x equals negative pi over 3. Now, to find the next x-coordinate, we will take the previous one and we will add a quarter period. Then x equals negative pi over 3 plus pi over 6. Let's multiply the numerator and the denominator of the first fraction by 2. Then negative 2 pi over 6 plus pi over 6 is negative pi over 6. The next x-coordinate is negative pi over 6 plus pi over 6, which will be 0. We will write this down. x equals negative pi over 6 plus pi over 6, which is 0. Then the next x-coordinate will be 0 plus pi over 6, which is pi over 6. And now let's get one more x-coordinate, and that will be pi over 6 plus another quarter period, which is also pi over 6. And pi over 6 plus pi over 6 makes 2 pi over 6, or pi 
over 3. And now I will plot all these points along the x-axis. So here we have negative pi over 3, negative pi over 6, 0, positive pi over 6, and positive pi over 3. Now, for each of these x values, we need to find the y coordinate of the sine function. To find y when x is negative pi over 3, we need to replace this x with negative pi over 3. Then we will have y equals to sine of 3 times negative pi over 3 plus pi. 3 and 3 will cancel and negative pi plus pi will be 0. Then sine of 0 equals 0 and 0 times 2 is 0. So when x is negative pi over 3, y is 0. I will plot this point with the coordinates negative pi over 3 and 0. Then because our sine function has a positive 2 in front, then from this point the graph will go up to positive 2, then down to 0, then will go down to negative 2 and then back to 0. So then the rest of the values for y for these five points will be y equals 2, y equals 0, y equals negative 2, and y equals 0. I will plot all these five points, and now I will connect them to form the graph. And because the graph of this sine function is just a helping graph for the cosecant function, we will make this graph all dotted. So here we have the graph of the sine function, and through the x-intercepts of the sine function, we will draw vertical asymptotes for the cosecant function. So here we have three vertical asymptotes at negative pi over 3, at 0, and at positive pi over 3. Then to the left and to the right, if we continue with the graph, then we will have more vertical asymptotes. Now let's start the graph of our cosecant function. Through this maximum point, we will have a U-shaped graph that opens up and approaches these vertical asymptotes. Then through this minimum point, we will have another portion of the cosecant function that will open down and will approach these vertical asymptotes. So here we have the graph of the cosecant function and this pattern will continue to the right and to the left indefinitely. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, leave a comment, and thank you for watching.